Welcome to Vyavi's webinar. We will be starting in two minutes. We are waiting for other participants to dial in. Thank you. Vyavi Solutions is recognized as a global leader in communications, test and measurement, and optical technologies. With deep expertise in 5G, fiber, and 3D sensing technologies. We provide network test, monitoring, and assurance solutions for communication service providers, enterprises, network equipment manufacturers, government, and avionics, helping these customers harness the power of instruments, automation, intelligence, and virtualization to command the network. Our light management and color solutions are widely used in 3D sensing, anti-counterfeiting, consumer electronics, and industrial, automotive, and defense applications. Formerly JDSU, Viavi Solutions was founded in 1923 as Wandel & Golterman, a European company that grew from two technicians building and selling radios to one of the world's largest suppliers of electronic test and measurement equipment. Viavi has continued to amass expertise through investment in R&D and the acquisition of key technologies. Building on this rich heritage of technical excellence, our engineering and research teams around the globe work tirelessly to keep up with the latest standards and emerging topics in network validation, verification, and visibility. Together with our 350 plus global channel partners, Viavi sells into 137 countries and 30 distinct market segments. We excel at listening, collaborating, and sharing best practices, and delivering proven solutions to meet business objectives. We hope you enjoyed today's discussion and look forward to continuing the conversation and learning more about how we can work together to bring networks online faster, scale and grow your business, and streamline and simplify operations with our comprehensive lab to field to assurance solutions. Hi, Pak Darwin, you may speak. Hello, Hello. selamat sore. Uh, can you share the screen, Pak Mohamed? Yeah, Darwin. Yeah. Ya, selamat sore kepada Bapak atau Ibu serta seluruh rekan-rekan semua yang sudah bersedia hadir di acara webinar VIV dari PT Sentral Radio Sosi Utama selaku distributor resmi dari uh, Viodok VIV di Indonesia. Perkenalkan nama saya Darwin Halim, uh, mewakili dari PT Sentral Indo Sosi Utama. PT uh, Next slide, next sir. Ah, PT Sentral Radio Sosi Utama sudah bergerak di bidang uh, bidang alat ukur, uh, test management tools, dan aksesoris lainnya, itu kurang lebih sekitar 12 tahun uh, lamanya. Terus kita, apa sih main bisnis kita, kita segitu kita adalah test management tools dari fiber optik, yang mungkin kalau dikenal di lapangan, itu namanya OTDR, uh, power meter, laser source, dan optical spectrum analyzer, dan beberapa produk untuk test measurement di fiber optik tersebut. Nah, di VIP ini itu juga ada namanya Transport Data Com. Apa sih Transport Data Com? Kita punya solusi dari dari 1 gig, SDH, PDH, 10 gig, kemudian 100 giga, dan saat ini yang terbaru adalah 400 giga kecepatannya. Jadi kita bisa uh, mengukur di, di sisi Transport Data Com. Nah, di, bagusnya di VIP ini kita juga punya solusi namanya RF Solution. Jadi di RF Solution, jadi kita punya solusi di fiber, solusi di Transport Data Com, dan solusi di Uh, radio frekuensi, nah radio frekuensi ini kita punya kabel antena analyzer, spectrum analyzer dan mungkin uh, semacam antena alignment, nanti kita bisa is, uh, inform di webinar tersebut di sisi itu juga kita punya produk yang bisa dilihat di uh, presentasi ini, kita bawa produk di bawah ini itu kita ada fusion splicer fusion splicer itu kita pegang perek detail, jadi furukawa dimana untuk nyambung fiber optik tersebut Oke, okay, mungkin nanti kalau misalnya uh, next, sir. Uh, mungkin kalau misalnya ada ada pertanyaan, kalau misalnya ada kebutuhan atau apa mau, mau webinar lagi tentang apa sih di VIV atau di ini boleh hubungi kami di website kami 
atau bisa follow Instagram kami atau bisa email atau YouTube channel kami bisa subscribe di situ ada beberapa video yang bisa dilihat caranya OTDR seperti apa atau nanti baca apa atau bisa kontak person kami di WA kami oke okay. oh ya sebelum uh, saya saya lupa nanti tolong di apa uh, di chat room ya di chat room ya itu ada kita minta um, para para peserta yang baru join sorry itu boleh Uh, isi form, nah, isi formnya ini gunanya apa? Nanti kita dari VIP dan Central Indo ini mau berikan gift nah, kepada para peserta yang join hari ini nih. Jadi mohon uh, dimasukin uh, alamat yang lengkap karena mau nggak mau kita harus kirim karena ini karena pandemik gitu ya, Bapak Ibu ya. Oke, ini berikut perkenalan singkat dari Central Indo. Untuk uh, berikutnya kita langsung ke agenda utama ke webinar ini ke Pak Muhammad. Oke untuk Pak Muhammad silakan dipersilakan untuk webinar ya. Oke Pak Muhammad for the time please to start the webinar. Thank you very much and enjoy the webinar. Thank you. Hello all. Good afternoon. Okay, my name is Muhammad Hasan Nazimuddin. I'm from uh, the Avi Solutions, um, basically a solutions uh, engineer. So today we're going to talk about. Um, cell site installation and maintenance. <clears throat> so this agenda for this afternoon, uh, first we start with introduction, fun hall evolution. So this uh, cell site architecture evolution, okay? so how is it evolving from 4G to 5G? Right. Um, so 4G RAM uh, is typically split into a radio unit close to the antenna and then connected to the base unit and sometimes uh, co-located or slightly further away. So the link between radio head and the base band is mostly short-range fiber and uses separate protocol to communicate. And evolution of 5G takes different shapes. <clears throat> when using um, low mid bands, that is under 60, so basically we are seeing at the left hand side, okay, the top most is really 4G plus 5G MR, F1. The second one is 4G and 5G MR, F2. And the bottom most is actually 4G and 5G MR, F1 plus F2. A millimeter wave. <clears throat> so, um, when using um, low and mid bands, that is under 60, that is FR1, the RAM infrastructure will look a bit different. The BBU and RRU will be split to the EU and CU, okay? distributed unit and um, central unit. <clears throat> the communication between the radio unit and the BU will be over the Cipri or the newer ECPRI. There is also a mid hall link uh, between the DU and CU. The purpose of mid hall is to enable different use cases of 5G. So, when using uh, millimeter wave uh, videos, uh, it's a far too capable, then easily would talk directly to the CU over the CP or ECP. The backhaul will continue to be over to the net. So it also takes the form of different implementation. On the right, you can see uh, DSS, okay, dynamic spectrum sharing, okay, uh, plus uh, um, 4G LTE or uh, 5G MR. Okay. And also FWA, fixed wireless uh, access, and NSA mode, okay, non standalone, and 5G NR standalone. And also in um, FR2, okay, uh, similarly, we have VSS, NSA, SA. Okay. <clears throat> okay, next. We will take a look at the 4G to 5G network topology evolution. 
So in 5G, there is fiber almost everywhere. That is, um, fiber is dominant, often going all the way to antenna. Not just optical fibers medium, but also use some WDM, that is wavelength division multiplexing implementation to handle the higher data rate density. Okay. So that is what we see different colors in the chart. <coughs> So if you want to get ready for 5G, so it implies that we have to plan for more fiber testing. Okay, next, we will look at um, cell site installation and the challenges that we face and the recommendation that we provide. <clears throat> First, I would like to introduce um, or talk about um, the antenna alignment, okay, which is actually critical in all networks. Okay, uh, in sorry, in all networks, um, in five G, is becoming more critical. So, why do we need to do antenna alignment okay, to avoid the uh, excessive cell order coverage and coverage gaps and interferences, the main cost, okay? And um, make sure there is no performance degradation of the microwave signals, right? So in 5G, it's becoming um, more critical for alignment, okay? And as um, part 2 comes in, uh, there are going to be a huge number of antennas at short distances. So aligning antenna is very critical. So I will like to introduce um, our product RF vision right, that um, precisely measures antenna alignment for um, azimuth, tilt, and row. Okay. It has a dual DNS frequency receiver. So it receives multiple constellations of the satellite to accurately measure the SMR. So it's automated, goes out results, and uh, it's rugged, and it's uh, lightweight, okay? and it's provide a line of sight report with the enablement of the camera option that comes with the equipment. Okay, next uh, we will discuss about the coax to fiber coexistence and evolution. Okay. So both fiber and coax are used in front hall. It all depends how the cell site is deployed. In 4G, the radio head needs to be away from the antenna, like basement of a building. Uh, then it's possible there is longer coax connection from antenna to the radio head. When the radio head is closer to the antenna, then the coax becomes shorter okay, with the fiber connecting to the BB. Similarly, where the BBUs are clustered, like in cloud RAM or base station hotels, the coax lengths are shorter. So the front hall uses a mix of coax and fiber. Both are important to test. So now, uh, although fiber is becoming dominant, coax is still there. So both are important to test, coax and fiber. In 5G, as we saw, there will be more fiber. Let's discuss about uh, cell site installation and machining of a feed line, which is coax, coax verification, that is the RF cable, particularly the RF cable or coax cable. 
So how do we verify? We look at the uh, signal reflections. Re reflections occurs due to um, the impedance mismatch that occurs along the line, uh, connection between the cable and the antenna. Uh, so basically, it's a uh, uh, reflection due to the impedance mismatch. So it's measured by written laws or VSWR. Both are same, measuring the same, but in different units, uh, written laws and DB are different way of interpreting, uh, measuring the reflection. A VSWR is the ratio. Okay. Uh, so the ideal case uh, reflection will be infinity, written loss will be infinity, and VSWR ideally should be one. So uh, there is no ideal case in the real world, so we need to make sure it is our uh, acceptable range. The next thing that needs to be verified is the fault along the quartz um, feed line. Okay, so we need to identify where the fault is. That is the method to find um, distance to fault, DTF. And of course, the cable loss is the signal attenuation that's going along the um, uh, wax cable uh, so that you compensate um, the right uh, signal uh, power so to achieve the required signal strength to be transmitted out of the antenna. <clears throat> so the feed line also includes antennas, cables, amplifiers, filters, connectors, combiners, jumpers, etc. Next is the fiber portion of the feed line. So fiber verification. Okay. Uh, basically, we will uh, looking at from all the way from dirty connectors, um, whether the fiber or cable is bent or badly routed or lossy connectors or fiber is crushed or pinched or water ingress to the cable. And um, DWDM channel checker, okay, that, um, and also the OTDR. Okay, so all these are some measurement um, tools that required for fiber verification. <clears throat> Next, let's look at the signal analysis okay, of 4G and 5G at cell site. Okay. Uh, the best practices for acceptance, maintenance, and troubleshooting. So we group them into uh, five uh, groups, major groups, okay. or uh, basic groups. Uh, carrier profile, okay. verify the center frequency and bandwidth of 4G and 5G carriers. And beam profile or 5G, okay, verify the beam or the SSB frequency and the sub area spacing for 5G and aggregation. Okay. So carrier aggregation is used to increase the data rate for user by using um, multiple frequency blocks called component carriers. Okay. So this will increase the data rate available per user. So the carrier's power level, the power balance is between the component carriers has to be verified and also the PCI of each carrier of from, um, for 4G and also in future in 5G. And the beam forming. So uh, basically in 5G, so we need to verify the availability of the beams at the location or at only location, okay, and the power of each beam and also the quality of each beam. Okay. Looking at the um, like measurements like um, um, receive quality, receive power, and also the sign R signal to noise ratio performance. And uh, coverage, okay? verify. Okay. 
coverage of the network for both the 4G, 5G. And LTE, okay, this, let's go into a bit uh, detail of uh, different components in LTE first and followed by 5G. LTE career profile, it ensures mobile soft handle or switching between cell sites. Okay. And uh, it also involves uh, if there are too many carriers, uh, various noise pollution or pilot pollution. Okay. What is pilot pollution? It's actually it's, um, too many carriers out there. So it could be difficult for the mobiles to identify which is the dominant carrier. And also the carrier's power level. And carrier aggregation, as mentioned earlier, has improved the, the bandwidth by using uh, more component carriers. Okay? The power component carriers can be within the band or okay, intra band or inter band. For 5G, we have the mobiles uh, soft handover okay, between different carriers. Right? We have to verify the presence of, uh, of different carriers available okay, and make sure there are no pilot noise pollution. And beam forming here, yeah, especially in 5G, uh, so we, um, Beam forming is enabled by antennas to provide coverage and increase capacity. And carrier aggregation in 5G, it also improves the bandwidth per user, or data rate per user. Next, we will talk a bit about DSS, dynamic spectrum sharing that uh, shares uh, between LTE and 5G. Traditionally, additional spectrum is required to deploy new wireless technology or reforming the existing spectrum. Okay. But however, uh, both methodologies are expensive and long, take a long time to implement. DSS offers a more economical and faster alternative for deploying 5G in existing of the spectrum. It can be implemented by doing time division, time division sharing, to split the, the bandwidth in time or in frequency. Frequency divided sharing for both time and frequency divided sharing. For three types of um, implementation. And when DSS is deployed, uh, one use case uh, we need to um, verify is that DSS, as we mentioned, is actually consisting of 5G. LTE and 5G is coming into the same uh, frequency, right, same bandwidth. Okay? And if it is um, unplanned, there could be a shared with a 3G from another tower. Okay? So it can be detected by our spectrogram, as detected in our spectrogram. You can see that there are two 3G signals sitting right into the DSS. So this will be helpful in implementation stage to avoid such occurrence. And network coverage. Okay. So the coverage assessment is to val validate service availability and um, possible dead zones. So the signal coverage um, consists of um, outdoor and indoor. Okay. 
So in both outdoor and indoor, we are doing an assessment or we have to do an assessment of service availability. Okay? Make sure the power levels are adequate, power levels of LTE, pilot signals are adequate, and identifying the network dead zones that causes call drops, <clears throat> and identifying uh, areas with low power levels, uh, power levels that's close enough to um, the UE's um, sensitivity that can cause throughput degradation and retransmissions. The next, let's talk about interference. So interference can be internal or external. Interference um, affects all wireless communication systems. Okay. Uh, UE is more susceptible to interference impairments and um, the major um, impact of degraded um, call success rates, increased drop calls, poor voice quality, and reduced data throughput. As we can see, when we say internal, is within the, um, the tower itself. Okay? Uh, it could be due to PIN, passive intermodulation, or external. Okay? So it's over the air, the outside of the tower, at the site. Okay? The target is to detect the low level interferences as well as intermittent interferences. And once after detect, we need to identify okay, whether it's an external or internal. And once we detect an um, uh, interferer, we need to locate the source of the interference. Next, we would like to introduce our VRD One Advisor 800 Test Solution, Cell Site Test Solution. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> as you can see, is um, One Advisor 800 is a scalable test solution. Okay. It's an all-new platform uh, from VRV. It's uh, specially designated to help installers. It is designed for today's needs and for evolution to 5G. It is designed to be modular, so it can grow as your needs grow. It combines uh, CAA, cable and antenna analysis, fiber test, as we discussed in earlier slides, there are still existence of quacks and, along with the fiber, right? And, <clears throat> and also <clears throat> other signal analysis. <clears throat> so you can pick and choose what <clears throat> you require and uh, and also, you can upgrade data. It also works with the popular VRV OTDR modules and multiple uh, fiber inspection scopes. So it can be thought of as a CAA unit plus fiber test plus spectrum analyzer plus signal analyzer. It also has EMF, EMF test capability. It currently supports uh, 4G technology, LTE, both TDD and FDD, and 5G MR, okay, up to 6 gig now. In future, it's a roadmap to include FRP. <clears throat> Plus, we have built in some excellent test automation tools to make the installation and commissioning process much easier.
So I'm going to go through in a few slides, actual, um, uh, the, the screenshots of the one advice 800 from actual field testing. So we can see that on the left, first one is the cable and antenna analysis is uh, showing the measurement of reflection, return loss, VSWR. And on the right, it's a DTF, it's from the fault, and it's capable of measuring cable loss and S21 measurement, scalar. And also is a, it has an RF source. That is actually the RF source is useful for like testing internal isolation. <clears throat> The next, in the middle, we see fiber verification. So it includes the fiber inspection and also fiber validation, the TDR. And as I mentioned, we have a workflow automation that is self-guided test sequence and embedded test report generation and cloud-based services for asset and data management. Let's look at the CAA, which is Table and Antenna Analysis Module with One Advice 800. So the cell tech site technicians in order to maintain and deploy a key site that require validation of coaxial cable antenna systems. And the 5G deployment required test instrument with no 5G and 5G capability. And cable antenna analysis ensure proper RF coverage with low, low reflections and reduces self induced pain. So the CAA is the module that combined with 5G test features of the One Advisor platform to ensure the cell site condition complete comprehensive cell site installation and maintenance with one instrument in easy and efficient way. So this is all in one, one, one process, all in one. Next is the fiber verification. The earlier saw the importance of checking, uh, verifying the fiber. Right. So we have visual fault locator to ensure proper routing and visually identifying which port a given fiber is on. <clears throat> and uh, fiber inspection essential for a valid loss of OTDR test to prevent connector damage. And optical channel checker ensures wavelength availability and with the power levels. And OTDR is required by some service providers with, um, to have a loss test and gives visibility into individual event loss. Next look at uh, signal analysis. So let's start with the LTE, OTE, the air signal analysis. So one advisor LTE over the air signal analysis includes uh, channel scanner, the ID scanner, and um, frequency and time error variation. So you can see that we identified the different component carriers for LTE CC1, as we said, this has been um, identified here. And as for the LTE frequency time variation, actually we are verifying the MIMO performance of 
the signals coming in from different antenna. Okay, so four X MIMO. And let's look at the 5G over the air signal analysis. It has carrier scanner <clears throat> and beam availability, beam analyzer, and a road, road map. <clears throat> so we can see that <clears throat> we have um, <clears throat> detected two different component carriers the carrier scanner and multiple beams okay, in the beam analyzer. It indicates that all the beams available at that particular location. Okay. So along with the, the properties or the measurements of every beam, okay, the PCI number, okay, and secondary synchronization signal, primary synchronization signal, and the power levels of both, and the quality of the both signals, synchronization signals. <clears throat> and the <clears throat> root map sorry, <clears throat> identifies the beam availability as we walk along or drive along in a particular location. So you can find blind spot that uh, has been weighed out in the, in the measurement. Okay. So we can rectify or identify why there is a the gap in the coverage. <clears throat> Let's look at our DSS analyzer. So one advisor supports um, DSS analysis. Um, basically, uh, analyzes, the analysis include cell identification, channel, and the pilot power, and the modulation quality. So you can see that the DSS consists of, as we uh, discussed, um, LTE and 5G shares the same channel, so you can see that we are able to decode both LTE and NR, signal information, including power and the <clears throat> modulation quality. And we also provide the root map for the SS, okay, that actually where is a the availability of the SS signal and the strength and the quality of the signal as we drive along. Next, let's discuss about um, interference. So interference is actually, um, we have to locate the interference as we discussed earlier, right? So there are two ways. Um, there are two ways in, in, involved okay, to identify a possible location or area where the interferer could be. Okay. How this is uh, done using our solution, we have an interference uh, hunting kit with a tablet, with um, that runs a interference uh, hunting software, EGLI, on a tablet that connects to ONA 800, okay, through either over the air link or wire link. Okay. <coughs> so you can put the ONA 800 at the rear seat of the car, right, and place the antenna on top of the car, <coughs> and uh, conveniently place the tablet in front of the driver, right? So these two can be connected through uh, hotspot, okay, Wi-Fi hotspot. So this software will guide 
you drew the location or the probable location where the interferer is coming from based on the signal strength as we drive along. So it will actually give a voice prompt for driving uh, direction to the suspected area. Okay. So basically we are zooming into suspected area. <clears throat> so once we identify a suspected area and we can actually do a on, on the point test, like walking along at this area using our directional <clears throat> antenna and the handle. So with our radar chart, it will clearly indicate which direction the interference is coming stronger from. So walk towards the direction where the signal is stronger and you create a possible uh, point P1. Okay. Similarly, walk along a few more distances to identify three points, which will give you a triangulation that is the most um, probable area the interferer is deciding. So we can walk towards it right, and look around for any transmitters or any antennas that has been visible so we can locate it. Next is um, our one advice 800 capability for RFO city, RFO city. As we have di discussed earlier at the beginning, right? so the fiber is becoming all the way closer to the top of the tower. Right? So in order to verify any interference, um, basically you know, coupling interference that is happening. So you have to, there are two methods. One is using the, verifying the coax portion of the big line, right? Uh, that is actually, it is becoming difficult as the RRU or is going to be, or uh, is placed very high up in the tower. So basically we can, identify the interference looking at the fiber link, the CP, right? So we can actually detect the interference along the fiber link. So basically it's an RF over fiber. Okay. <clears throat> we digitize the IP signal and plot it into spectrum and we can have a full up to four spectrum display. So it could be um, one for uplink or one for downlink or two different carriers or with one uplink and one downlink. It also have a <coughs> spectrogram, real-time spectrogram that captures any um, intermittent interferer that is occurring. Next is the workflow automation. Okay. We have a job manager. Okay. So it's, uh, it's a job as a set of individual tests. Okay. It's a sequence. We can create a sequence of um, individual tests. Okay. And can customize the jobs. Okay. And um, the instrument displays a step by step instruction. And it shows the test progress and results. Okay. And with a cloud based Strata Sync, okay, you can organize and push job assignments and test configuration to instrument remotely and also collect and organize test results automatically. Okay. And the next tool that we have is the SAA, Smart Access Anywhere. Okay. 
So you can bring the two anywhere in the world, right? As long as the unit point one advice eight hundred has the Wi-Fi connectivity, either through hotspot or some wired connection, you can access it from other any other part of the world through internet using the smart access anywhere tool. So you can have a remote control of the unit. Okay? And also you can do a file transfer. So we are coming, we have come to the summary slide. VRB has a complete set of instruments and solutions for a cellular network installation and maintenance. We have fiber instruments to test all fiber links, from fiber to antenna to backhaul and, and long distance networks. We have set of tools to help install RAM, whether it is to make sure antenna alignment is correct, to ensure coax and fiber installed properly, or to verify the RF performance of the RAM. Our Ethernet and transport solutions ensure the backhaul performance meets the KPI that you need, whether it is for transmission quality, throughput, or latency. And finally, our test process automation are designed to help installers and experts to get full confidence in the installation and test process. Yeah, that is. Now we open for Q&A. Hey, Darwin, there are two questions in the chat box. Uh, would you yes. be able to respond to that? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, Muhammad, uh, there are a question from... There is some questions. One, for hotspot, does this have the same Wi-Fi within device and the Android device? Sorry? Yeah, for the hotspot, does it have to be the same Wi-Fi between device and Android device? Oh, you're talking about the, the interference uh, advisor, the connectivity between the tablet and the WNA One Advice 800? Yes. Oh, yes, it has to be the same Wi-Fi. Yeah, okay, then, and the second question is the One Advisor 800 tool used for One Advisor 800? Sorry, back to the first one, sorry about that. So yeah. if there is um, no possibility of Wi-Fi connection between uh, interference sampling right, between the tablet and going 800, you can use wired connection. Okay. Go ahead with the second one. Okay, Next second question. is the one advisor at Handel's tools used for one area one tools or only in the detect interference and use fre only frequency. Uh, sorry, please repeat. Is this one advisor at 100 tools used for one area, one tools, or only to detect interference and use one only frequency? One area, yeah, one, one, one tool. area tools, or only to detect interference for use only frequency? Oh, well, detect only the frequency. Mm -hmm. Yes. One area of frequency. Okay, uh, when we detect the signal, of course, we are looking at uh, uh, you're, you're saying that oh, one interferer at a time, right? One interfering signal at a time, is it? We are actually looking at the interferer in terms of um, the RSSI, right? Or the channel power or peak power, right? The first thing we identify there is a 
interferer in the signal. It is interference in the signal, right? Or close to the signal. Am I answering your question? So we we put a place a marker on that frequency, which is the interfering frequency, and get ready to hunt for this signal. So when I say hunt for this signal, there are two methods of identifying the signal's um, um, strength as we drive along. Either it's an RSSI or channel power or using the peak power method. Okay, uh, this two different deduction mode depends on the, uh, the type of interferer that is present. So basically, when we track around, actually, yes, you are, if I get your question answer, uh, sorry, question right. So you're looking, at, are you asking, or we are look, only look for one interferer at one area at one drive? Is it the question? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and the third one uh, is this ONA eight hundred test CAA spectrum beam test feature. Is it true? Yes. It has a CAA. Is the we mentioned it's scalable, right? Modular. It has a CAA. It has an OPDR, right? It has a spectrum. Spectrum is the Standard, okay, standard uh, that comes with the unit. So CAA, OTDR, signal analysis. Signal analysis include LTE, FTD, or TDD, or 5G, FR1, or future FR2, right? Or NSA, or PSS, okay? So all these are added as per required. Yeah, Eric. Okay. So it's all in one tester. Bapak atau Ibu mungkin ada pertanyaan yang lain? Any other questions, right? Yes, yes, we have. We have. Yeah. Okay. Mm, the new one. Well, uh, uh, ECA can be used to to port transmission and insertion loss. Yes, we have to port transmission. Yes. Next question. Uh, oh, another question, Pak Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Oh, up to how many frequency for the gigahertz? Yeah. For the spectrum and then for the CAA, yeah, uh, Muhammad. Okay, um, CAA is um, uh, spectrum is up to sixty. CAA is slightly lower than. CAA. So the the frequency up to six gigahertz, right? And for the that is a spectrum for the CAA. Sorry, yes, uh, is it? Uh, uh, it's slightly less than sixty. I, oh. You can um, look at it in the data sheet. Yes. Jadi bisa men, itu sudah menjawab penjawab pertanyaan Pak Hengki ya. Jadi CA-nya ini bisa dua port dan ya bisa dua port ya Pak dan bisa CAA, bisa spektrum ya Pak ya. The system ada question uh, is the VSWR and the spectrum already used in cellular operator in Indonesia? Uh, which one? Sorry, sorry. 
the VSUL or spectrum, the CAA or the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it already used in operator in Indonesia? Uh, yes, uh, probably uh, other models. Awareness is relatively new, right? With the 4G and 5G analysis together with, uh, uh, as you mentioned, VSWR capability and CAA capability, right? Uh, we, in, uh, in the, we, used, we still have um, our, um, uh, our older tools uh, that have been sold to Indonesia that supports um, CAA, uh, basically that's VSWR, uh, plus uh, 2G, 3G, and 4G signal analysis. Yes. Well, a, well one advice I have that is relatively new. Oke, okay, ada question Pak Muhammad. Ya, yeah. uh, the ONA 800 is modular based, right? And then the second one is the ONA 800. Uh, this is this is too long haul. Oh, you uh, ini kayaknya salah ketik ya. Mungkin uh, is this for OTDR long haul or short haul? Uh, Mungkin maksudnya nanti uh, saya, saya pakai bahasa ya. Uh, maksudnya mungkin nih pertanyaan OTDR ya Pak ya. ya. Kalau yang ini Pak M Pak Musar ya. ya. Oke okay, benar OTDR. Ya, yeah, this is uh, for the second question. It is the only uh, the only 800 support the OTDR is uh, short or long Pak for that one. Uh, the support short or long, right? Hey, hey, Darwin, uh, but Darwin, let me pick up this. So this is gone. Oh, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, so the OTDR goes up to 45 dB. So this is the same uh, 4100 uh, OTDR we use on the normal uh, handheld, right? So it's like the MTS 2000 or MTS 4000. So it's the same modular OTDR used there. And you can, as you see the picture, you can plug in at the back. Uh, so it, um, up to 45 dB, which is, I would think it's a mid-range. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, mungkin bisa menjawab Pak Muksin ya. So this is ONA, is modular, modular Pak ya. Kemudian ini support OTDR, ya Pak ya, sampai 45 dB. Ya. Mungkin menjawab pertanyaan Pak Musar ya. Oke, okay, nada. Oke, okay, another question from customer is for the update from wire and after sales, is this any limited time or how the better lifetime, Pak Muhammad? Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, upgrade, upgrade. Yeah, for the update from wire and after sales is uh, have a limited time or depend on warranty or how about the lifetime like that, Pak Muhammad? Oh, you mean the warranty? Yeah, I think the firmware. Uh, firmware, uh, you're talking about yeah, firmware? Yeah, firmware, yeah. So firmware is actually as and when we release added new features, enhancements, right? Uh, if you subscribe to us, we will announce, right? So um, you can, uh, upgrading firmware is, uh, is uh, free and easy. Uh, you can download and upgrade it. So... Uh, yeah, let me add on that. So... Yeah. Uh, The firmware upgrade you can download from our support portal anytime. Warranty is three years as all uh, VRV uh, product. Yeah, so three years warranty. Okay. Mungkin menjawab, ya. 
Kalau from wire, coba bahas ini. Wirenya ini free pak, jadi tinggal di download aja di my abet unit pak ya, itu gratis pak gitu. Oke, okay, yeah. another question. Uh, can hmm. this unit can be remote like the Bertes Viavi? Oke, okay, maybe I ask ya, I, I can answer this one. Yes, can pak. <laughs> It's very That's easy. A That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> Because I have remoted the unit. Yeah, times, it's right? very easy. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, but glad you, you asked that question. So <laughs> we use uh, VRV yeah. uh, MTS series or uh, OTDR. Exactly the same. So there's a SAA feature if you remember the few slides ago that is still there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oke. Okay. Ya, yeah, question about license, the software license uh, full or partial or maybe you have another uh, software license that uh, specific for another test. Or you mean the license for um certain uh, modes yes options uh, options right right yeah so the basic is uh, the standard is spectrum analyzer right like 4G right um, you want to have 4G signal analysis LTE signal analysis it is it requires a license you need a 5G signal analysis it requires Yeah, the, the short answer is uh, we will tailor uh, license based on your needs, right? But the good news is you can always add on new license uh, for new functionality in future. So because you may start with uh, the basic functionality and gradually you take on more project, right? More tasks and then you add on more, right? So there's two part of addition. One is hardware, right? The other one is uh, the software function uh, add on top. So it's very flexible, modular, and is also uh, cost effective. Okay, there's another question. Via uh, fee on the global, uh, what operator have used or what country have used it? Uh, Venkat, help me yeah. out here. I think this uh, now uh, ONA uh, or, or one advisor is relatively mm -hmm. new product as uh, yeah. Muhammad mentioned. Uh, but in other countries, probably not uh, in Indonesia yet, uh, there are many early adopters. Uh, Venkat, maybe you have a better knowledge than me. Uh. Yeah, I can. Uh, thanks, John. Thanks for the question, uh, by the way. So uh, I can answer that to some extent because... Uh, it's being used quite a bit in uh, Japan and in Australia uh, for uh, 5G uh, installation and also a little bit for 4G troubleshooting. So um, where I think the customers are finding it useful is that they have the ability to do RF testing and fiber testing uh, with one unit. So yes, it's, being, it, it's a very new product. So uh, we're just starting on it, but it is being used quite a bit in Australia in Japan, and we also have this uh, being evaluated by operators in other countries. Hey, in Thailand, I think it. And, yeah. and Thailand, we, yes. Yeah, yes, Thailand, yeah. yeah. We have uh, customers uh, purchased a couple of units uh, in Thailand. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Yeah. Yeah. J j just to add on mm -hmm. what the uh, Venka mentioned, so uh, we do have a RF. Uh, Uh, test tools, right? It used to call cell analyzer, but that's like a just RF alone. And then we, of course, JDSU or VRV is well known for OTDR, right? So this uh, technology-wise, the CAA spectrum analyzer, OTDR, all there, right? So what we did with this is really a new frame, right? Latest screen, uh, all the new uh, menu, uh, software, And we bundle together, right? So now it's like uh, one advisor, right? One meaning that one, one tester, one report, one process, right? That's basically 
the idea behind it, right? But it's also modular, right? It's not just one that then you got uh, you may buy over a cube, right? So it's modular as well to start low and then gradually you get all you want, right? So that's one angle. Second angle is really as what uh, Venka mentioned is is uh, a gearing towards the upcoming technology like a five G. Right. But you can still use it for the existing 4G troubleshooting or acceptance tests. But then, you know, if you invest now, you also invest for the near future, right? The 5G is going to come anyway, right? It's already many operators in Indonesia uh, doing trial, right, as we know. Yeah, thanks, John. That's a good summary. Okay, there's another question for ONA 800. Uh, can we use to measure power directly to BTS? How much input power that can be accepted? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, um, for ONA 800. Uh -huh. uh, can we use to measure uh, directly power to BTS? Who? Uh, BTS. B BTS, 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 yeah, BTS. Yeah. Oh, that means you are saying that can we do a uh, direct connection to um, uh, the antenna? I mean, uh, transmitter. Do a direct yes. connection. Yes, we can. Uh, Provided we we uh, use the right attenuator. Okay, observing the maximum uh, input power of the instrument. Right. So yes, we can do. Uh, we call it in connected mode testing. Yes. Can do. Uh, is it use another tools? No, it's same. same. No, no, same. 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 Yeah, it's over okay. the air, OTA. You just place it on the side, away from the antenna tower, right? You pick up the signal and do the measurement. Okay, you're right. Certain measurement has to be in conducted mode, right? And it's called conducted mode. Where you where you connect uh, directly um, to the radio, to the cable, RF cable. Right. Um, uh, this uh, a service has to be disrupted, or unless you have some uh, splitter or bridge, okay, uh, to tap the RF signal. Okay. Yes, uh, they can. It it, it it is used, in fact, for conducted measurements. It's not a separate tool. Same. Okay, and can be used to measure selective power frequency? Uh, um, yeah, um, selective power frequency, that means uh, uh, you want to verify um, certain signal for power? Yes. Yes. Oke, okay, Bapak Ibu mungkin ada pertanyaan lagi? We also have power sensor support. So all the measurements that we they mentioned in the slides actually basically we focused on OTA. Right, the other side. Okay. Uh, this also can be done, um, like say spectrum analysis or whatever, in conducted mode. Yes. And you will see the modulation quality measurements will be better in conducted mode. Any other question, Eric? I see Ranu Yoga raising his hand. You have been unmuted and you can ask your questions. Silakan, Pak Ranu Yoga. Ada pertanyaan mungkin? Oh, no.
Yeah, I think it's just uh, <laughs> accidentally. Oh, accidentally surprised. There's a question for the PIM test. It can be used to measure what frequency selective or white band. It uh, is for PIM detection. It support uh, the whole frequency range the spectrum analyzer supports up to 6 gig. They mention in, um, in 5G, right, uh, the interference RF positive is um, RF over 6 gig that I have to mention. Mm -hmm. Any other question already? Uh, not yet. Uh, Bapak Ibu, mungkin ada pertanyaan lagi? Another one. Uh, there is a question again about the PIM test. Uh, are you sure this can measure all the frequency from uh, 900, 800, 1,800, 2,100, and 2,300 in one tools? Yes. You are saying that uh, uh, PIM is the result of uh, uh, basically intermodulation of two signals, right? So your question is actually you want to detect PIM that is at this frequency, happening at this frequency. Yes. Can we detect? Uh, yes. Yes. So PIM is actually resultant of intermodulation, right? A mixing of two signals due to two reasons, right? Corrosive uh, components, uh, whatever. So the resultant PIM, they are saying uh, lies in this frequency. Are you able to do that? Yes, we can. It's still within the range of uh, instrument frequency range. Uh, and another question. Uh, is VRV the sum function and operation sum as the sum JDSU? VRV function same as JDSU. You mean sum JSM? Uh, sorry? DSM. Uh, DSAM. DSM. Uh, Any idea? Uh, I'll pick this. I'll pick this. Okay. So, uh, DSAM is the for the cable, uh, not really the RF, right? It's the cable uh, you use for broadband and T, uh, what do you call that? Uh, the TV, right? So um, if you use DSAM in the past, number one is different, right? This is more for the radio uh, wireless side. But if you use DSAM in the past, we do have uh, upgrade version of DSAM, which is called ONEX, right? So you can uh, um, uh, let me know and uh, we can uh, follow up on that. But uh, no, that's, uh, this one is different from DSAM. Bye, Rick, I think there's one more question below. Okay. okay. Um, can you show the spectrum, eh, sorry, the CAA? OTDR features that's uh, the other band that they can have and we can do it. Uh, you mean show the slide that I showed just now? Um, you are saying um, what features we have in CAA? And, and OTDR so others can have and we can or oh, I mean, others can't have, we can have. Yeah. Or uh, others uh, means uh, competitors? Yes, competitors. Oh. We can uh, study and um, give you a competitive analysis to you, and maybe you can forward to the customer for a competitive analysis. Is it okay, Eric? I don't have it right I guess the first place um, I'm not sure which we are comparing to. Yeah, we will Maybe do a follow-up. Uh, yeah, yeah, we so, can do um, a follow-up. Yeah, we'll do a follow-up. Mm.
Okay, it's another question for PIM test. Uh, can we support the machine learning until the two uh, x forty six dBm power? Uh, two forty. Forty six. Two times forty six dBm power. Oh, that means uh, you are actually uh, trying to inject. Actually, here is PIM deduction. Uh, actually, here we talk about pin detection, right? We are not um, doing a pin analysis. You have to understand the difference. So, pin analysis is actually uh, a pin analyzer, right? That you can inject to frequency and see how the uh, pin is, uh, the characteristics of the pin. Okay? It's pin analysis. Uh, what we have is a pin detection. We can see whether if there is a pin present or not. So there is no, uh, it is different from PIM, uh, PIM analysis. Is it clear, Eric? Yeah. Yeah. There is a different, it is a PIM analyzer is actually the instrument by itself. Okay? Now we are here is talking about in the cell side uh, to detect the PIM if there is a PIM present. Okay. Um, but that is the PIM detection. We are not a uh, pin analyzer. It doesn't want a uh, present a pin analyzer. Pak Ibu, mungkin ada pertanyaan lagi? So Eric, uh, do you uh, explain our responses to the customer? The questions were in the Bahasa. <coughs> Sorry, Pak Muhammad, what you... I mean, are you explaining our responses to the questions in the Bahasa that you uh, help us to translate? Are you explaining to them or they will just take from us? Oh. Maybe, yeah. Maybe you can explain to them or offline. Or... Oh, okay. Okay. So it's PIM detection, not PIM analyzer. It's not a PIM analyzer. The feature is a PIM detection. Jadi uh, mungkin mau jawab pertanyaan dari Pak Hengki, kalau ini uh, kita PIM detection Pak, bukan PIM analyzer, ya Pak ya. Kemudian. Oke, okay, clear. Okay. Untuk harga nanti di tim di follow up sama tim uh, sales kami ya Pak, uh, Pak Winarko ya, nanti di, di follow up segera. Mungkin Bapak Ibu ada pertanyaan? Uh, uh, Pak Muhammad, another question is, uh, do VIP have the PIM analyzer? Uh, uh, no, we don't have PIM analyzer. Okay. Uh, Pak Hengki, untuk sementara PIAVI belum punya PIM analyzer, Pak ya. Kalau PIM detection bisa, Pak, support. Oke, okay. mungkin ada pertanyaan lain? Oke, okay, ya. kayaknya udah clear ya. Uh, nanti kalau misalnya ada pertanyaan lagi, mungkin ya bisa dihubungin ke Central Indo, Pak. Jadi bisa langsung ke kami, nanti kita akan segera follow up di beberapa pertanyaan yang belum terjawab atau masih ada bingung atau apa atau mau lebih khusus lagi boleh pak gitu nggak masalah bisa kontak kami segera gitu I think ya untuk pertanyaan sudah kita beberapa jawab ya untuk tadi yang tanya desam itu eh, tadi sudah dijawab pak ya yang desam via v ya pengoperasian sama dengan desam ya gitu apakah sama tidak ya pak ya Any more questions, Eric? Uh, any other discussions? Kayaknya, uh, so far no, no yet, Pak uh, yeah. Muhammad. I think yeah. uh, uh, the no question again yeah. for this. Yeah. So if they have any further questions that uh, comes to you, you can direct to us. You can help us to answer. Yeah. Thank you everyone for attending the webinar. 
uh, we will have the post survey question sent to your email please help us to fill up if you want to reach out to us please feel free to uh, to uh, reach out and um, email um, Devi which uh, email will be in that uh, post survey question um, thank you thanks everyone Ya, thank terima you. kasih pada thank waktunya, you. Pak. Terima kasih. Terima kasih thank atas waktunya. Nanti ditunggu webinar berikutnya, Pak ya. Oh ya, sebelum ditutup mungkin yang belum isi Gong Form, monggo diisi, Pak. Nanti itu buat kita buat kirim gift-nya dari VIP. Thank you. Viavi Solutions is recognized as a global leader in communications, test and measurement, and optical technologies with deep expertise in 5G, fiber, and 3D.